Hello and welcome back. Now in this video we are going to continue the uh, rigid connection of a beam to column calculation according to Eurocode 1993-18. In the first two videos we went through the uh, columns flange in bending and then columns uh, web in transverse tension. Now it's time to go through the end plate which is under bending. Coming back to our uh, example, just as a recap. So HEA200 is connected to HEB300 uh, by an end plate with the width of 250, 320 and the thickness of 16 millimeter. We have 6M20, the class of M8.8 for this connection and we calculated the resistance of the bolts uh, for the columns flange in bending and also for the columns web in tension now we are going to continue with the eurocode if we look at table 61 the other item is end plate in bending item number five and the design resistance is given in 6265 so in 6265 end plate in bending uh, item number one each individual bolt row required to resist tension each group of bolt rows required to resist tension number two the groups of bolt rows either side of any stiffener connected to the end plate should be treated as separate equivalent T stubs and the figure 610 is important. The dimension E minimum required for using 624 should be obtained from figure 68. For that part of the end plate located between the beam flanges, for the end plate extension E minimum should be taken as equal to EX from figure 610 and the effective length of an equivalent T-stop flange L effective should be determined in accordance with 6242 using the values for each bolt row given in table 66. So these are highlighted notes and we can continue. In uh, figure 610, we can see this uh, definition of different parameters. BP is the width of the plate. W is the width between two bolts. EX is the distance between the center of the bolt, the row bolt, which is outside of the flange. Here in our example also we have one row. MX is the distance from the center towards the flange. And then the idea is just cutting it to two and assume that L effective is half of the distance. And E is the distance from the center point to the edge of the plate. So these are parameters we need to consider. Now if we come to our case and look at the sketch of this example, we need to have some sort of uh, estimation of the weld. We assume that the flanges are welded by an 8 millimeter weld. So 8 millimeter weld here and the web is welded by a 4 millimeter weld. Typically they are welded with the same leg size but uh, in this example I prefer to go with 8 and 4 millimeter to differentiate these two together. And if we come back to the side view of this we can see that here we will have 8 millimeter weld. 8 millimeter weld the same here and 4 millimeter in both sides of the web. So this 8 millimeter is the leg size, not the throat. So here is 8 millimeter and 8 millimeter for the weld. Now, if we look at the case here, how to determine MX, now we have the flange of HEA 200 which is 200 millimeter width and then we have this plate 16 millimeter plate this distance is 250 
and here we have one and two holes mx is the distance from this center to here this distance is ex now if we look at this uh, end plate and the uh, beam from side view we can see this plate here and here we have the hole this distance is mx now if we go through figure 6 8 m is this distance so mx should be calculated according to the well that we have in the flange of our beam ac in this uh, illustrative figure represents the throat thickness so ac times s square root of 2 is the leg size so here this is leg size of the belt so leg size of the belt for us is 8 millimeter now we can calculate in our case ex is given 50 millimeter mx will be 40 millimeter minus 80 percent of 8 millimeter of the belt 33.6 millimeter is mx and if we look at the side for us e is this distance between these two is 130 millimeter and this e is 60 millimeter and w and b plate so w is 130 millimeter and b of the plate is 250 millimeter like flange of the column under transfer spending that we had a table to determine the equivalent t-stop effective length for the end plate in bending also we have similar table that we need to follow here is table 66 we can see a bolt row location again we have individual and group of bolt rows a circular pattern non-circular pattern bolt row outside tension flange of the beam we have one row first bolt row below tension flange of beam so we have these two items for now let's have a look so here is our case for the first row and this is for the second row and here we can see that we do not have any uh, group if we have bolt row outside the flange they are not forming a group so a smallest of these values 2 pi mx pi mx plus w pi mx plus 2e for circular pattern and four items for non-circular pattern for bolt row outside tension flange so here we can continue with row number one in row number one as they are above the top uh, flange which is going to be under tension when it is applied to load here we can assume that this part of the plate is forming a t-stop and the a stiffener here is the top flange as far as it's just one side in Eurocode it is uh, assumed that they are cut to the half and then we can imaginary form a t-stop so here is the cut plane and after that we will have this t-stop here is e distance which is 60 millimeter and this is half of w this is ex which is 50 millimeter and as far as we have the weld here 8 millimeter weld this is mx which was 33.6 and now if we look at it from the side we have some kind of ts top here for row number one now different uh, failure modes need to be considered 2 pi mx so it means that you assume that the, the yield line will be completely circular as shown here 2 pi mx then the other one is pi mx half of the circle plus w which is half of w here half of w here so again this t-stop length is completely uh, 
mathematical calculation theoretical equation it's not exactly the same length of the uh, yield line but it gives the impression to understand it better which one we are talking about now here is pi mx plus w and the, the last one is pi mx plus 2e this is for circular pattern that we can calculate we have mx 33.6 millimeter 60 millimeter and also w which is 130 millimeter so now we can calculate each one this value will be 2 pi 33.6 211 pi mx plus 130 236 pi mx plus 2e 226 so these are l effective um, circular pattern the minimum value should be taken so l effective circular pattern for this case will be 211 millimeter this is for only circular pattern we need to calculate also non-circular pattern we have four items for non-circular pattern coming back to our table six six we have these four items of which the minimum should be taken for non-circular pattern 4mx plus 1.25ex the first one 4mx plus 1.25ex the next one is e plus 2mx plus 0.625ex 0.5b palette and the other one half of w plus 2mx plus 0.25 625ex so uh, i go this way to understand it easier so 4m when we have non-circular pattern this this distance is 4m and then 1.25 is these two legs so in other words half of it is 2m plus 0.625 then it comes to the cut or the yielding line according to the uh, straight line towards the left of this plate for example here from this point to here it is e and this point is 2 mx and this is 0 0.625 of ex of which ex is here the other one is half of the plate width and then half of here we can see that this is half of w then 2mx and then 0 0.625 so this is not again again this is not the length of the yielding line this is the equivalent t stop effective length that's all it is not representing this yield line but this is the method that i i remembered in my mind so now we have mx in our case 33.6 millimeter we have ex 50 millimeter we have e 60 millimeter and we have b of the plate which is 250 millimeter w and w which is 130 millimeter now i can calculate one by one four times 33.6 1.25 times 197 60 plus 2 times 33.6 plus 625 50 158 half of 250 125 half of 130 plus 2 times 33.6 plus 0 0.625 times 50 164 in millimeters so the minimum value l effective non-circular pattern is 125 millimeter now we have these uh, results for row number one l effective circular pattern 211 and l effective non-circular pattern 125 now if we come to the calculation of mode number one and two l effective one should be the minimum of these two which is 125 millimeter and l effective two should be always l effective non-circular pattern so here l effective one and two both will be 125 millimeter 
the rest you are familiar with that uh, we have an effective now we need to determine the uh, m plastic so m plastic one and two are the 0 0.25 times l effective one or two here times t s square f y divided by gamma m zero so the thickness here now we are talking about end plate as a result this thickness represents the thickness of the part which is under bending in this case it is 16 millimeter the thickness of plate l effective one and two 125 millimeter and fy 355 megapascal as a result m plastic one and two rd will be 0 0.25, 125, 16, 355. So it will be 2.84 kilonewton meter. And now we can determine the force in each failure mode. First, we need to determine N. N is the minimum of E minimum and 1.25 M. Here M is MX, 33.6. 125 33.6 is 42 millimeter and e minimum is 50 millimeter e minimum in this case is the coming back to here this distance because now the t is formed in the center of this imaginary part or t stop so e is representing in that direction and if uh, as far as it is uh, connected to the column's flange so we have enough space for that e minimum is taken as this value as 50 millimeter so anyhow 42.6 will be taken as n now we can determine ft 1rd 4mpl 1rd divided by m 4 times 284 divided by 4 33.6 338 kN ft 2 rd 2 mpl 2 rd plus n sigma ft rd divided by m plus n we remember that ft rd is 140 kN 141 kN from the uh, column flange in bending so two times I can write down the equation 2 times 2.84 kilonewton meter plus n is 42 millimeter times we have two volts 141 kilonewton and then divided by 33.6 millimeter plus 42 millimeter 232 kilonewton and then ft3rd will be 2 times 141 kilonewton which is 282 kN. Now here we can see that in this component, uh, mode number two is the maximum resistance as far as it is the minimum value between mode one, mode two, and mode three. So in other words, as far as these two bolts are outside of the flange, they are not uh, protected enough. As a result, they might have less uh, capacity compared to column flange which was completely protected by the central web but here they are only on one side and we can see that the mode number two will be dominant here so for row number one ft will be 232 kN it was 282 kN earlier in the other side this is for a uh, row number one calculation in the column flange it was completely similar for row number one and row number two but when it comes to the end plate it's completely different first row is outside the flange but the second row is inside the flange and it's the first row below the tension flange so it's completely different as we noticed also in our table coming back to this table here we can see that it's completely different 2 pi m and alpha m alpha is given in uh, the other figure 6 1 now let's have a look on the failure 
or yield line of the failure. Now this is the illustration of what we have in the other side. Here we can see that the M value given in the table coming back to here. So it's M and alpha M. So M is the distance from the center of the hole up to the uh, web. So coming back to here, you can see that this distance is M. And as a result, if you sketch the yield line, you can see that it's crossing the, uh, the flange. It's again, this two pi M is just the T stop uh, equivalent T stop effective length. So this is two pi M and the other one is alpha M to show the non-circular pattern. So how to determine this alpha? It's given in the other graph. So here we can see that uh, when we have the first row below the tension flange, then M is the distance in horizontal direction. E is the distance up to the edge of the plate and M2 is the distance in the other direction, closer uh, distance to the tensile flange. So here, this will be M, this is E, and this is M2. Coming back to our case, uh, this distance is 40 millimeter and the flange thickness of HEA200 is only 10 millimeter. The distance between two bolts in our example is 90 millimeter as given. Now, this distance from here to here is 90 minus 50. This is 40 millimeter. And there is the weld with the thickness of 8 millimeter. So I can calculate M2 will be 40 millimeter. This 40 millimeter minus 80% of 8 millimeter. And it will be 33.6. And for M, this is 130. And the web thickness of the beam is 6.5 millimeter. So now M will be 130 millimeter divided by two minus 6.5 millimeter divided by two minus 80% of four millimeter as the web weld. 58.6 millimeter. And E is the distance to the edge, which was 60 millimeter. We had it earlier. So with these values, M, M2 and E, we can calculate lambda one and lambda two given in the figure 611. So lambda one, M divided by M plus E, 58.6 divided by 58.6 plus 60 millimeters. So it will be almost 0 0.5 half and lambda 2 m2 divided by m plus e 33.6 so 0 0.28 lambda 1 0 0.5 lambda 2 0 0.28 so a little bit more than 2 pi so as far as a uh, circular pattern is 2 pi this is a little bit more than 2 pi so it is conservative if we continue also with this as 2 pi so here I can take alpha is slightly greater, greater than two pi. So, but conservatively, I take two pi as alpha for this case. Now we have circular pattern, two pi M, 368. L effective non-circular pattern, also two pi M. A little bit more, but we can go with this value. Then for mode one, it will be the minimum L effective mode one, 368. And for mode two, always non-circular pattern, 368 millimeter. Now M, P, L, again, one and two are the same, 0 0.25, 368 millimeter. We are just talking about the end plates. So here it is 16 millimeter of thickness and then 355 megapascal divided by one 8.36 8.36 8.36 8.36 8.36 8.36 8.36 8.36 8.36 8.36 8.36 8.36 8.36 8.36 8.36 8.36 8.36 8.36 8.36 8.36 8.36 8.36 8.36
kiloNewton meter and again calculation of FT1RD 2MPL1RD divided by M4 4 times 8.36 divided by 58.6 570 kN FT2RD 2MPL2RD plus N sigma FTRD divided by M plus N again here N is the minimum of E minimum which is 60 millimeter and 1.25 M 1.2558.6 is already 73 so here we can see that 60 millimeter is taken as the value of n so 2 times 8.36 plus 60 times 2 141 divided by m plus n 58.6 plus 60 so it will be 284 i can write down these values this is 2 times 141 kN, 60 mm, 8.36 kN meter, 58.6 mm, and this is 60 mm. Now FT3, 2 times 141 kN, which is 282 kN. Very close between mode 2 and mode 3, but uh, again mode 3 is taken. So here FT will be... 282 kilonit. Coming back to our table here, as far as we do not have a group of bolts in one side of the tension flange, we do not have any group here. If we had, then we had to go through the other side of the table to calculate, for example, for the first row, then you can see that this equation needs to be considered for the uh, calculation of non-circular pattern but here we do not have as far as if we look at our case we have bolts here and bolts here so it is not possible to form a t-stop of this end plate including all of these four bolts as a result we do not have such a case here but for example if we had this type of flange and we had these bolts here then we could go through the calculation then this was taken from here and the second one would go through this part other end bolt row here this is for just two rows as group if you had three rows for the end plate then this was taken from here this was could be taken from here and this one could be taken from here so uh, in our case it's very straightforward uh, we do not have the group formation for our calculation now coming back to here with respect to the end plate under bending we have only two uh, rows row one row two each one is determined individually and according to our calculation now row number one can take up to 232 kN and row number 2 can take up to 282 kN. Now if we come back and bring our layout, so this row bolt can take up to 232 kN and this can take up to 282 kN according to end plate under bending. So now to have a summary for the column flange under bending row number one row number two row one and two as a group so it was 282 282 564 kilonit the next one was column web in transverse tension yes 790 kilonewton 790 and 1006 kilonewton and now we have end plate in bending 232 282 and there is nothing for row one and two as a group almost we are close to determine the maximum tension capacity of these components uh, that's all for this video it's the end of this video we went through the calculation of end plate capacity when it's uh, in bending and uh, we 
understood how to determine L effective for both rows outside the flange, the tension flange, and the first row below the tension flange. That's all for now. We go through the other tension force in the beam in the next video. Thank you for watching. See you next time. Bye.